Hello, good day. So, I hope you are safe and having a good day. So, our topic for today is government accounting. This is phase one because if you would check our channel, there's no anything about government accounting. Okay, so let's proceed. Our learning objective for this topic is number one, to be able to define government accounting. Number two, to be able to identify the principle of accounting and financial reporting for national government owned and controlled corporation and local government units. Next, number three, to be able to determine the indicator of the government financial performance. And then lastly, to be able to identify account auditing governmental agency. So let's proceed. So what's the what is government accounting? So this word, word because we know that accounting is a process of identifying measuring, analyzing, and communicating the result of a financial transaction in for a decision-making, whereas government, it's an instrumentality that will be able to protect the people or the sovereignty. So, government accounting is a process of recording and management of all financial transactions incurred by the government, which include income and expenses. So, if you would say, it's, it's also a process because a means of collecting tax and then building projects for the people and protecting the people and then recording all the receipts and the disbursement of this government fund and the way how it managed transaction incurred by the government which include income so income are commonly our taxes and other ben and other income arising from government transaction whereas expenditure this involved the salaries of the government or also known as your personal services, the maintenance and operating expenses. So these are the day-to-day -day activities of the government that were incurred, like the lighting, the depreciations of the roads, the highways. So these are the MOE. And then the capital outlay, these are the infrastructures being built by the government. So government accounting will involve the transaction or recording of all the receipts which is the income, all the receipts, and the disbursements, which are the expenditures of the government. Okay? So, government is under the, here in the Philippines, our government system is known as the New Government Accounting System, also known as NGAS. So, the New Government Accounting System, this is the accounting system on a computerized basis of the government that would be able to easy, easily facilitate all government transaction of the different government instrumentality. Hence, the National Government Accounting System provide the chart of count, the coding, so that they would be able to arise in a financial statement for the entire government. So, the reason for doing such is that so that all the government would ha will have a uniform guidelines and procedure in accounting for government funds and transactions. Remember, in our uh, financial audit in our financial accounting we know that if these are business combination meaning all the accounting methods and guidelines should be unanimous so that it would be easier for it to combine in our consolidated financial statement so government also do the same under our end gas we also have the new coding structure and chart of account and the new coding and the chart of account is applicable to all government. These are the entire different kind of account that could have all the account be able to be fit into each and every government instrumentalities. So if you would see, the government accounting is just an application of our financial accounting or our private accounting. So there's also accounting books. So the government would also have the general journal, the journal, the cash and the check disbursement journal, the cash receipts and the check receipts, the registries. So the registries are normally for our capital outlay, records, forms, report, and financial statement, as well as the accounting entries. But we would have a separate topics for this one and so that it would, it would be more elaborate. Okay? Next, the reporting framework being used by the government are two. So, there are two accounting framework being used by the government. Number one is the 
International Financial Reporting Standard or IFRS. If you would know, this is also the IFRS being used in our financial accounting. And then the other one is the International Public Accounting Sector Standard or the IPSAS. Although if you will check, the two of them, they are almost the same. Although some, there are some addendum for the IPSAS that are not applicable for the private. Okay? So, normally, the IFRS is being used by the government-owned and controlled corporation. So, these are entities of the government that generate income for themselves. So, also, or be able to support itself and does not rely heavily on the national fund for support or to the national government. Meaning, these are agencies or ito yung mga agency na hindi nang hihingi ng pera sa government or from or humihingi, humihingi ng hati galing sa ating mga taxes. So, example, PAGCOR. Because PAGCOR are more on gambling. So, instead, yung PAGCOR nag-earn pa yan at nagbibigay pa ng money sa government. So, PAGCOR is a generating unit. The SSS, because SSS collect revenues from us, the worker, and then the BSP because they regulate the banks. So, these are entities that does not rely heavily on the government funds because they have the capacity to earn from their, from themselves. So, ang ginagamit nilang framework ay IFRS, just like in our financial accounting. Whereas, this one, the national government and the local government, some lo go local government, they rely heavily on the taxes being collected or the national revenue being collected by the entity coming from the BIR, the costumes, and other instrumentalities that earn money to the government. So, these are those government entities that are not able to support itself and rely heavily on the national government. Example, DEX or the Department of Education, Culture and Sport because if you would see, wala naman masyadong kinikita to because they would provide free schooling for the people. Nagbibigay pa sila ng mga books, nagpo-provide ng mga upuan. So, these are this rely heavily to the government. So, wala naman silang kinikita, pero may mga expenses pa na na-incur si government. Or in short, meron din naman kasing mga entity like DNR, NHA, this earn a little amount, pero yung mas ginagastos nila, mas mataas kesa sa na-earn nila. Halimbawa, NHA, nagkocollect sila ng pera dun sa mahira para dun sa land, para malipat sa kanila. But if you would check, the value of the land is quite much lower than what the government has expended for that particular land. Kaya ang tinatawag sila rin na government-owned and controlled corporation, not GBE or not generating business entities. Okay? So, yun yung isa pang tawag sa kanila. So, ano naman yung mga indicator ng government accounting? So, the public sector entities, ano bang ginagawa nila? Siyempre, they deliver goods and services rather than generate profit. For example, di ba? yung naggagawa sila ng roads and bridges, nagpo-provide sila ng free education, free hospitals. So, yung mga yan, yan talaga yung mga ginagawa ng government. So, therefore, yung success nila can only be partially evaluated by examining the financial position or financial performance. Kasi, di ba, hindi, hindi porket loss sila, masasabi na natin na hindi effective yung government. So, merong tatlong reporting na ginagawa ang government. Number one is the financial statement. Para malaman natin kung meron bang fiscal adequacy. Di ba yun yung sabi ng taxation natin? Na dapat yung government merong fiscal adequacy. Ibig sabihin, mas marami yung na-earn niya kaysa sa ginagastos niya. Pero, kailangan din ng compliance audit para malaman natin kung yung mga in-earn ba ng government na para sa particular activities was being expend. Kasi kung hindi yan nagamit, Ibig sabihin, hindi efficient yung government. Why? Kasi tumatagal yung pera, hindi na e-enjoy ng mga tao or ng mga mamamayan na beneficiary ng government yung dapat nilang ma-enjoy. Halimbawa, uh, sabi magpapagawa ng roads. Tapos yung roads, dapat ang period lang ay isang taon, pero tumagal na ng apat na taon. So, therefore, kawawa naman yung mga resident doon kasi di nila nagagamit ng maayos yung roads nila. So, yun yung siya na-check ni ni compliance audit para makita rin kung tama ba yung mga nakukomply nilang mga rules, budgets, and activity. 
yung performance kung na-perform ba ng maayos. Like for example, yung roads. Sabi, one year lang pero tumagal na ng limang taon. Ano ba yung reason? Dapat makita yung reason why it, it is. At saka tama ba yung mga binili nila? Or yung money ba na in-expend nila doon, tama lang? Or sobra-sobra na? So that's why meron tayong tinatawag na value for money. Or sometimes it's governed by those expenses that are not that are unnecessary, meaning hindi naman niya dapat kailangan. Excessive. Sobra-sobra. Um, extravagant. So, sobrang glamorous nung, nung ginawa. Hindi naman mag-benefit masyado yung mga tao. So, yung mga yun, sinacheck din yun ng government accounting para malaman kung ginagamit ba yung pera ng mamamaya ng mas maayos. Okay? So, ano ba yung basis ng government accounting? So, the legal basis of the government accounting is under Article 9, the Section 2, FAR of the 1987. Or some books, it's also known as PD 1448, which state that the Commission on Audit shall have the exclusive authority subject to the limitation in the article define the scope of audit. So, meaning sila yung mag-audit, sila yung mag-e-examine para malaman kung nagawa ba yung financial compliance and performance so, darin yung mag-establish ng techniques and methods. So, therefore, alam nyo na kung sino yung author ng NGAS. It's the Commission on Audit. And require and formulate, formul, formulate the accounting and auditing rules and regulation. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga rules and regulations ng government, even though some of which are just adapted with our IFRS, COA formulate din. Tinitignan ng COA kung ano ba yung mga nandoon na pwedeng i-adapt ng government. Or if not, they would usually issue a government accounting manual. So, parang practical. Kung sa IFRS, meron tayong tinatawag na practical guidelines. Yung GAM, yun yung practical guidelines or yung accounting procedures naman ng government. This include those that are prevention and disallowance, irregularity, unnecessary, excessive, extravagant and uncushioned expenditure or use of government fund. So, itong nasa baba, itong prevention, disallowance of irregular, unnecessary, excessive, extravagant, or unconscious expenditure, use of government funds and properties. Ito yung nire-report sa ating performance or value for money audit. Okay? So, chin-check din yun ni Kua. Okay? So, if you like this video, please help me reach out more people by hitting the subscribe button below and the like button. So, God bless you all. And if you have questions, please comment. Okay? Bye. Hope you have a good day.